Today we're going to look at Ansible. It is an automation IT software provided by Red Hat. And their website is a little bit confusing because when you look at it, it doesn't show you any kind of indication that Ansible is a downloadable product, but instead they just promote their Tower product. And you can use Ansible fully without using Tower. Tower is a web GUI management for your Ansible scripts, and we're not going to cover that today, but instead we're going to look at the actual Ansible command line. So this is a basic server layout for Drift and Ruby, where we have users coming in through the internet. I have a load balancer which gets split off to several different web application servers. The servers then have access to the database, and the database gets mirrored. Also have a Redis cluster set up that the web applications talk to, and this is just for caching, sidekick, and action cable. Also have a Elasticsearch server set up for the full text indexing search. So today I want to focus on the web tier, because when I deploy new code to Drift and Ruby, I'll have to upload it to each one of these different web servers. And I want to keep these servers and its management as simple as possible, and that's where Ansible can come into play. I can run just one script, and it'll update each one of the servers automatically. So if we look at the upgrade script, you'll see that it's just calling an Ansible playbook, it's running this YAML file, and it's passing in the inventory. If we look at the inventory, you'll see that I'm just passing in a few different servers. And if we look at the upgrade script, you'll see that it's a YAML file. And I'm first calling on one host. I'm setting the remote user to passenger. I'm passing in a few different roles, which we'll look at roles in a minute. And then I'm performing four different roles. So the first is calling the app update. I run any migrations. I restart Nginx. And then I restart Sidekick. On the other two servers, I specify the remote user, and I just run the app update, restart Nginx, and then restart Sidekick. And so if I were to run the upgrade script, you'll see that it first runs the DR21 server, and then it's pulling from the GitHub version control. It's then bundling. It's pre-compiling the assets. It's running the migrations. It's restarting Nginx, and then it's restarting Sidekick. And then it'll go through the other two servers, and then it'll pull from the GitHub repository, it'll run bundle, it'll pre-compile the assets, and then we'll expect it to restart Nginx and then Sidekick. So as you can see, to update the code and restart the services on each one of my servers is very simple and very manageable. And today I would like to show you how I set up my scripts and how you can do something similar with your environment. So the first thing that you need to do is type brew install Ansible, and this will install the Ansible command line. And once it's installed, you can call Ansible, and then you can look at the different options. So Ansible Galaxy is a command where we can init a new role. And this will create the framework for our app update. And typically when I'm working on a project, I'll like to create a new folder, and then I'll just call this folder roles. And with all of the roles, I like to keep them separated in a roles directory. So now we have our roles directory with our app update. We can create a new file for our entry point. And I'm just going to call this entry point.yaml. We can then create a file for our inventory. And with this inventory file, you can just start listing out some servers. So we'll just call one dr1. And then we can pass in an option called Ansible host. And here you can give the IP address of that server. And if you also need the Ansible script to run as a particular user, you can also call Ansible user and then pass in the user that you want to use. And you can copy this down for however many web servers that you have, and then you can just update the IP addresses and numbers accordingly. So in our entry point, we first start off and we say which hosts do we want to run. And here we can just call servers because our inventory file has this tag servers. And then it'll run the following on all of them. If you do need to specify the remote user, you are able to do this as well here. And it'll run the roles as this user for each one. And then you can pass in the roles. And the roles is going to take a list of options. So in our case, we have a role called app update. And whenever we run this now, it'll run the app update role as a user passenger for all of these servers. And the main task file for a role would look something like this, where each one of these names are a different task that we are executing. So for the first one, we have pulling from our version control, 
and then we're passing in the arguments to change the directory first to our application directory. We then run bundle, and we pass a command bash lc, and this is just so that even though we are using the passenger user, this will create a separate login shell for that user. So because I'm using RVM on the production environment, it's going to be able to run the bundle command. And then when we go to pre-compile our assets, we're also running the bash lc command, and then we're passing in our Rails environment to production, and then reg assets pre-compile. And again, we're changing our directory to the application directory. So you definitely need to check out the documentation because it has a lot of different information for each one of the different tasks that you can run. And a lot of these are pre-built in. For example, under the commands module, here's a command that we're using to fetch the GitHub repository, bundling our gem file, and then pre-compiling our assets. If you look at this, it gives you a lot of different options that you're able to use. And then it also provides you examples. So here is an example. This is just going to return the message of the day. It cats the message of the day, and then it does this register, and then the my message of the day. And this register is important because it's going to allow you to take this output and then be able to reference this variable elsewhere in your Ansible scripts. And Ansible is a very powerful scripting tool because you can use it to communicate with your pip or even your app packages, and you can use this to provision servers from nothing. So with all the provided modules, it's extremely powerful in what you can do. And you can set it up to automatically spin up new servers whenever you need to, and then kill off old ones as well. It has good integration with different hypervisors or like AWS Azure, or if you're using ESX or Proxmox within your own environments. So under the app update, I'll go under the tasks and then open up the main YAML file. And within here, I can put in the task for updating my application. However, we still need to restart the Nginx and the Sidekick server. And to do this, I can create a whole separate role for this. And I like doing this because I like keeping my roles as a single responsibility where the app update role is getting the latest code and bundling it and pre-compiling the assets. I see that as just one single function that's broken up into three separate tasks. So let's say you had this remote user, but it's not always going to be passenger, but you want to be able to pass in this passenger user as a variable. Well, you're able to do that with Ansible with using the double mustaches. So we can call a remote user like this, but then we need to feed into the Ansible script who this remote user or what this definition is. And you're able to create a vars file declaration and then pass in a file. So we can create this vars folder and then within this folder, we can create a new file called public.yaml. And within this file, we'll create our remote user, and then we'll just call this passenger. So now at this point, I should be able to run my entry point YAML file, and then pass in the inventory for the list of servers that I want to update. So you can see it initializes, it then gets the git pull from each one of the servers, it runs bundle, and then pre-compiles the assets. However, at this point, we still need to restart our Rails server on each one of these. And we also need to restart any other services like Sidekick. You'll also notice that we did not run the migrations, so you would need to run the rate db migrate on one of these servers. So for my roles directory, I'll use Ansible Galaxy init, and then create a new role called Restart Sidekick. And within this role, You'll see that now I'm using this raw command because I found that using raw will allow the sudo service nginx restart to work properly. Now there were some changes that I did have to make on the actual application servers in order for sudo to run passwordless. So here I'm SSH into my server and under the Etsy folder and sudoers.d, I have a file called passenger. And within this file, I just have my username and then the string. And this all equals all, no password all, will allow the user, passenger, to be able to run sudo commands without prompting for the password. And we'll also need to copy our public SSH key to the remote server, so that way the Ansible script will automatically log into that server. So if we take a look at what's under our SSH directory in our home folder, we need to copy the IDRSA public key, or whichever public key that you need to use. So to do that, we can run a simple script, 
and this is going to cat our public key, and then we're calling pipe, and then SSHing, passing in the user, and then the host name, and then running the command cat the output of our SSH key into the SSH folder, which is in the home directory of our user, and then into the file authorized keys. And by doing this, it'll inject in the SSH key into our remote host. We can then create another role to restart our Nginx or Apache service. And then under the Restart Nginx task folder and in the main.yaml file, we can then just paste in our code for restarting the Nginx server. And then within our entry point YAML file, we can then copy out our roles and then we can paste in Restart Nginx and Restart Sidekick. And this should now be able to update our application, Restart Nginx, and then Restart Sidekick. So let's have a look and make sure that our scripts will run now. So it got the latest code from GitHub, it bundled our gem file, it's pre-compiling the assets, it's restarting Nginx, and then it's restarting Psychic. Yay, it works. So next let's create a role for running our migrations. And we can do this again with the Ansible Galaxy, and this time we'll just call this Run Migrations. So under our roles, run migrations, task folder, and in the main.yaml file, we'll put in the code to run our migrations. And you'll see that again, we're using the command module, and then we're passing in bash lc to create a separate shell session, and then we're running the Rails environment production rate db migrate, and we're doing this in our change directory into the application directory. And within our entry point, we can then create a separate entry to run our migrations. And we'll put this above the restart Nginx and Sidekick. Now the problem that we're going to have is when we run the host, we have three hosts listed here in this inventory file. And it's going to run this in parallel on each one of these servers. So this run migrations could cause an issue with having this role run multiple times at the same time. So I want to separate this task out so that it'll run the services on one server all the services, including the migrations on one of the servers, but then on the other servers, it'll exclude running the migration. So back in our inventory file, we can reference each one of these servers individually, or we can create a separate instance where we're calling just something else like cattle. And then within here, we can then reference our cattle. Another way to do this would be to have it all listed as one servers, but then you're just picking one server that you want to actually execute from. So in this instance, we are calling hosts dr1, and then under our cattle, we're just calling dr2 and dr3. So finally, we can test this again, and it'll run the playbook. So it ran the migrations on the first server, and you'll see that it's only running all of these instances on one time. But here, in this case, it's actually running these both concurrently. And everything has executed successfully, and hopefully the site is still up and running. So definitely check out the Ansible documentation because there's so much in it that we have not covered here. For example, you can conditionally run tasks based on certain criteria. Another thing that you can do is iterate over a task with items. And with something like this, you can have the same task, but then inject in with items so it'll run this task multiple times, but for each one of these items in the list. And it references with the double mustache and then it passes in the item dot name, which would reference to the test user one. And then within the groups, it passes in the groups. So it's going to reference the wheel user for the test user one. So there's so much more that Ansible can do that we have not yet covered today. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.